Okay. All right, so let's talk about molecular orbital diagrams and homos and lumos and all that fun stuff. So we'll start with something simple. A three carbon chain with a negative charge on it. And we'll have to draw a molecular orbital for that. Okay, so first thing to do is look at your structure and count up how many sp2 hybridized carbons you have. Now, every end of a double bond is sp2, and any charge that is a single bond away from a double bond will also be sp2 because of resonance. If I draw resonance arrows like this, I see that I get the negative here, and now the double bond is over here. So we consider this sp2, even though right here it looks sp3. Okay? So I have three sp2 hybridized carbons. And for every sp2 hybridized carbon I have, I'm going to draw an energy level stacked on top of each other. Now I'm going to ask, how many pi electrons do I have in this structure? And the sources of pi electrons you will run into are three. Every double bond, every negative charge, and every oxygen and nitrogen that are on single bonds only. They cannot be on double or triple bonds or they will not count. Every oxygen or nitrogen that is single bonded will contribute two pi electrons. All of these contribute two pi electrons. So we look at the structure and we see, well, this double bond and this negative charge is a, this negative charge is a source of pi electrons. So I have two four pi electrons. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill in these energy levels with those pi electrons. Each energy level can fit two pi electrons, and I have four, so I go one, two. Once this energy level is filled, I go to the next one up. You always start from the bottom, though. So this would be my energy diagram. Now let's add in a couple things. First of all, identify your homo and your lumo. The highest occupied molecular orbital, meaning the highest energy level that contains electrons, will be your homo. So this one right here is the highest energy level that has electrons drawn into it, so we consider that the HOMO. Your LUMO, your lowest unoccupied molecular orbital, will be the lowest energy level that does not contain electrons. So this one right here. Finally, we need to label two more things. Or, well for now, start from your lowest energy level and label that zero, and then count up by one for each subsequent energy level. So one, and two. Okay? What these numbers correspond to is the number of nodes. And we'll explain what that means in a second. Now let's get into drawing the actual diagrams. So, when you draw your diagram, you're going to draw every single carbon, single bonds, no charges. So I have three carbons total, so I draw three carbons. I'm going to draw the zero, uh, the zero node energy level first. And what that refers to is or, sorry, so um, actually let me refer to this by one other name. So these numbers specifically correspond to the nodes. If we were to, get a, if we were to give an actual name to those orbitals, we were, would refer to them as pi 1, being the first energy level that you have pi electrons, pi 2 because that's the second, pi 3, and so on. Okay? So 0, 1, 2, nodes, one, pi 1, pi 2, pi 3, the name of the energy level. Okay, so now on my energy level that corresponds to zero nodes, my pi 1 orbital diagram, since I have no nodes, I'm not going to do anything special. All I'm going to do is on every carbon, draw an 8, and these represent your orbitals. Now you're going to choose either the top or the bottom. I'm going to, I like to start from the top. You're going to color in one side and one side only. And now you're going to color in every side the same through the, through the rest of the structure. So if I said I'm coloring in the top here, I'm going to color in the top here as well, and here as well. And this would be the molecular orbital diagram that corresponds to my pi 1 orbital. Now let's draw, typically what these questions will ask you to do though is draw the representation of either your homo or your lumo. So let's do that now. This one will correspond to my homo. Again, I have three carbons, so I draw a three carbon chain. Now, unlike the first drawing, I have one node. And a node is where I'm going to draw a dashed line through either a bond or through a carbon. And on either side of that dashed line, I need an equal number of orbitals. So, for example, if I chose to draw the dashed line here, well, I have one, two, three. 
Well, that doesn't work because I have one orbital on the left and two on the right. So typically when you only have one node, the place where you draw the dashed line will always be straight through the center. Okay. Now an important rule is if that dashed line ever intersects with a carbon, you do not draw the orbital there. Okay. Now you're going to start coloring in again. I'm going to choose the top to start coloring in. Now the rule is whenever you hit a node, the side that you color in flips. So I started in coloring in the top, now I hit a node, and the side that I color in will flip. So now I'm coloring in the bottom. And so this would be my pi 2 orbital that corresponds to my FOMO. Okay? Now let's do my pi 3 orbital, my orbital that corresponds to my LUMO. In this case, I have two nodes. So I'm going to draw my nodes like this, through the bonds. Because what this will do is give me an equal number of orbitals between each node. 1, 1, 1. I'm going to color in, starting from the top, hit a node, flip the side that's colored in. Hit the node, flip the side that's colored in. So this would be the orbital diagram that corresponds to my LUMO, which is my pi 3 orbital. Okay? So that's the basic gist of how to draw your molecular orbitals. Now, here's a practice problem. Well, uh, let's erase this. Okay, so a big practice problem. I'm going to give you two. I'm going to give you a diene. And let's put a negative charge on it, like that. And then I'm going to give you a dienophile with a positive charge on it. And so I want you to draw molecular orbital diagrams that correspond to both of these structures, and then answer this question. Will the Diels-Alder reaction Will the deals alder reaction occur? Okay, so at the very least, you should be able to draw the molecular orbital diagrams. Once I go through that, I'll explain this. So pause the video if you want to give this a try. Otherwise, follow along. Here we go. Okay, so for this one, I have one, two, three, four, five carbons. I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five energy levels. How many pi electrons do I have? Two from this double bond, two from this, and two from the negative charge. Six pi electrons. Six pi electrons on one, two, three, four, five carbons. Okay. Now I'm going to fill in my energy in my electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now I identify my homo and my lumo. Highest occupied molecular orbital, lowest unoccupied molecular orbital. And this time I'm only going to draw the homo and the lumo. I'm not going to draw the other energy levels. Counting up, I have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and I have pi 1, pi 2, pi 3, pi 4, and I don't care after that point. So let's draw the homo first. I have 5 carbons, so I draw a 5 carbon chain, and I need 2 nodes. The best place to have 2 nodes on a 5 carbon chain would be straight through those 2 carbons, because now I have 1, 2, 3, and an equal number between each node. I, erase the, I draw this in, hit the node, flip the side that's colored in, hit the node again, flip the side that's colored in. This is my HOMO. Now I do the same for my LUMO. Okay. I have three nodes in this case, so the best place for that would be one here, one here, and one straight through the center. And now I have one, two, three, four, an equal number between each node. Color in one side. Color in the other side. Color in one side, color in the other side, because I keep flipping every time I hit a node. And so this will be my LUMO of my diene. Okay, now let's do the same for my diene of 5. So let's draw this over here so I have more room. Negative charge, no positive, positive charge. Okay. So I have three carbons in this case, so three energy levels, one, two, three, zero nodes, one node, and two node. And then I have pi one, pi two, and pi three. Okay. How many pi electrons do I have? I have two from the double bond, 
Positive charges do not give pi electrons. They only allow a system to be conjugated, allow a system to resonate, but they do not actually give any pi electrons. So I only have two, one, two. So pi one is my homo, pi two is my lumo. And let's draw those out. I have three carbons, so I draw three carbons. I have zero nodes, so I just draw my figure eights, my orbitals, and color in the same side on all positions. There, and there. My lumo, so this is my homo. My lumo will be three carbons, but now I have one node, so I cut straight through the center. One, two, and again, since I cross the carbon, I don't draw the orbital there. Color this in one side, pick the node, flip the side that's colored in. So those would be my two molecular orbital diagrams for the diene and the dienophile. Now the question that I added on top of that was, which will this deals all the reaction occur? And for that, we have to do one more extra rule. What I'm going to do is I'm going to look at my homo and I'm going to look at my lumo of both structures. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line straight through the center like this. And like this. And I'm going to ask, is this side the same as this side? Is it symmetric? Well, I have up and up, and in the middle I have it cut in half, so this homo is a symmetric homo. Okay. If I do the same thing for this, the lumo, I have up down, and then I have up down here. So this is not symmetric because this side is not colored in here, and this side is not colored in there. So this is an asymmetric lumo. Now do the same thing for this one. My homo has a clear plane of symmetry. Everything on this side is the same as this side, so it's a symmetric homo. This one, on the other hand, is asymmetric because it's colored in on this side, but colored in on the bottom on the other side. So this is an asymmetric lumo. Okay? And the rule is, for the reaction to work, you need, you need the homo of one to interact with the lumo of the other, and both the homo and the lumo must be symmetric or asymmetric. They must both be the same. So if I look at this homo right here, I said I had a symmetric homo. And I line it up to the lumo of the other one. So symmetric homo to asymmetric lumo. I can try it the other way around. Here I have an asymmetric lumo that is going to line up with a symmetric homo. So if one is asymmetric and one is symmetric when they line up, will it work? No. Both need to be the same. So will this reaction work? No. This reaction will not occur. If you do do it, if you, if you go through the molecular orbital diagram and you get a homo that is symmetric, and you get a lumo that is symmetric in the other structure, then it would work because you have two of the same in terms of symmetry. Or if you had one that was, a, if you had a homo that was asymmetric pairing up with an asymmetric lumo, again the reaction would work because both are asymmetric. But in this case, one, they are not lining up properly, they are not the same, so no, the reaction will not work. And that's the extent to what you need to know, of what you need to know from molecular orbitals, save for one last thing. And this is just a, a simple concept. Or, you know what, I'll keep, I'll keep this diagram for a second. I'll work off of this. So, sometimes you're going to see a question that asks, which transition, which transition corresponds to the longest wavelength absorption. And this is a very straightforward rule. They're going to give you, it's probably going to be a multiple choice question, and you're going to have to pick from a bunch of orbital diagrams. There will be two orbital diagrams you have to pick, and those two orbital diagrams will correspond to your homo and your lumo. So for example, if you were asked which transition corresponds to the longest wavelength of wavelength absorption, your answer for this example, this diene file, would be these two molecular orbitals. So which transition corresponds to the longest wavelength? The transition between homo and lumo. 
Okay? And with that, that's about everything you need to know about molecular orbital theory for carbon chains.